Hi everybody, welcome to another Carrera tutorial. I'm Kreitman. And what we're going to do this time through is we're going to go through the natural shader functions of your shader tree. And uh, we're going to see some of the cool effects that you can make and uh, look at the different parameters in them. Uh, one of the things we're going to make special note of though is uh, your fire, uh, ripple, and wave textures because uh, they're, anima they're animatable over time. And they're animatable in a loop and we're going to go over how to do that when we get into Carrera. So uh, let's get into Carrera. Okay, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Our first shader in line is our cellular shader. And the cellular shader is probably the coolest shader that you're going to use. Uh, it gives you nice natural bumps in your uh, in your textures for your geometry. Uh, it's great for skin. It's great for skin. It's great for scales. It's good for rocks. It's good for like cave scenes. Uh, you can do a lot of cool things in here with your between your transform and the three sliders that they give you. You can get some really nice effects. Uh, your limits. See that? We can scale down for lots of bumps. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. Check this out. See how it's kind of broken things up a little bit, and if you play with it a little bit, oh, if you play with it a little bit, copy, paste, you can get some really, really nice effects. You're li using your limits. Okay. Um, your very next best texture is your fire texture and it is your next best texture because it's animatable over over time uh, it has a completion slider up here that if you see a completion slider in your shader uh, that means it's animatable it means it has a starting position at the beginning of your animation and an ending position at the end of your animation 100 percent at the end of your animation is going to give you a seamless loop and that's something that you really want to be aware of uh, something else you kind of want to be aware of too is the texture comes in upside down. If you put it on a plane, you're going to have to turn your plane 90 degree uh, to plus 90 degrees uh, in order to use this. Um, another thing too is you need to drop the same fire or the same part of your shader in your alpha channel. Uh, if it's at zero percent put it at 0% in your alpha and it'll cut away on your alpha. Um, but you copy it here, copy and paste and that'll give you a nice transparent fire. Let me show you this. Gives you a nice transparent fire. And it's good for flames, um, of course. It's good for like candle flames. Uh, something else you can Something else you want, might want to be aware of is you don't have to make your fire orange. I mean, it's no, you don't have to make your fire orange. I mean, you can, but uh, you can make it blue. You can make it green. You can make it all kinds of different colors. Don't just uh, don't just go for the orange. Orange is just for darker scenes and that kind of thing. Um, lumberyard. Lumberyard is. Uh, it's pretty daunting with the uh, it's pretty daunting with the amount of options it has, but don't be don't be scared of it. Basically, what you're doing is you're taking lines and you're running them down your x, y, and z axes, and you have specific controls to do that. You have specific controls to do that. Uh, you have uh, persistence, perturbation, all that stuff, and there are a lot more options than what you really need for what you're doing, I think, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, you can get some good electrical effects out of it. You know, all kinds. Of, it, you can do some good stuff with it, but, you know, if you don't have the time, I would just use wood. Uh, so, there's that. Now, our marble... Our marble doesn't necessarily have to be marble, either. Now, if... Uh, if you want it to be energy, oh, it's, it's not a very good representation of it. If you want it to be energy, 
uh, you can make it energy uh, just by copying from one channel and pasting in another. Paste it in the alpha, turn your glow red, and uh, you have nice little uh, electrical currents or you know energy animations. And uh, you can animate this over time using your transform. You can use any of these to do it, uh, undulate it back and forth. But it's not going to be a loop like your fire and uh, rippling waves are. Uh, your spot texture, uh, it only has a couple of options. You can make spot sizes and you can blend them. Turn your blending all the way. Well, not all the way. But turn your blending up a little bit and you have more spots. They're more blotchy, I guess, but you know, play with them a little bit. And uh, one thing about the spot shader too is it gives you an, it gives you a way to get some really nice cheap particle effects. If you don't want to go through the particle generator, this is what you this is where you'd go. Copy, paste, and you have a nice. You have a nice cheap particle effect if you want it, just by doing that. Um, your ripple does what exactly does exactly what you think it would do. It ripples from the center. You have an em it emanates from the center and it works its way outward. And uh, it does it over time using the completion slider, just like the fire did. Um, you have a couple of different options in here. You can you know kind of shake it up, put a little perturbation in there. And it'll still emanate out from the center, giving you some very groovy effects. Um, yeah, same thing. You can you can copy and paste it into your glow bump alpha channels, and uh, you know get some very cool effects. Uh, your wave shader is uh, exactly like your ripple shader, only it doesn't emanate outwards. It emanates across your plane and uh, it has a couple of different options you can make less waves more waves and it can be animated over time completion 0 completion 100 uh, just the same way that your ripple uh, shader does now there are a couple other shaders in here that I don't have and uh, I plan on using those for plan on using that those on a different tutorial just FYI there's not just eight on here. The last one that we're going to look at is your wood texture. And it basically has the same uh, has the same options as your as your marble shader. Or your marble shader. I'll just take my word for it. <laughs> it has a it's basically the same as your marble shader. It has just vein count, perturbation, undulation, da -da -da, vein blending, and uh, this is the same. You can do the same thing with uh, all your other stuff. You can make it into energy. I use it for wood bark, basically. But to me, it's a better choice if you're if you're making wood, uh, to make it with your wood shader, because uh, lumberyard, like I said, there's just way too many options. Um, now, if you notice, there's only eight here. There are ten shaders altogether, and. Uh, the ones that I didn't put on here, <clears throat> excuse me, are a uh, particle shader because I'm going to use it in another tutorial in snow because there's, you know, it's just a couple little options and very easy to understand. So uh, anyway, that's it for this time. I'm Kripe Man, and I'll talk to you again later. Bye.